This podcast is part of the BombPod Media Network. Hi, how are you guys? All right, so I'm going to try not to say the F word for this entire episode. You're really going to do that? I'm going to try it. Good luck to you. Fantastic. (laughs) As we have the live show, October 28th. Yeah, that's That's six days from now. First of all, thanks for joining us for this episode. Thank you guys. Halloween, murders, and mayhem. Yes. All kinds of nasty stuff. This is going to be a, a, like we said on Instagram, this is going to be a shit show. Oh yeah, we got some good good little ditties here for you guys. We had, as always, our um, contri- or contributor Courtney. She's a research assistant. Mm-hmm. And we got a new one. Oh, Julie. Hello, Julie. Hi. Thank you so much. Welcome to the family. I think we're gonna split their duties. Rob's gonna get one. <laughs> you said duty. <laughs> I'm gonna get the other. All right. I'm just gonna put them to work. <laughs> we got a little. We're building a box for them. We're gonna put kitty litter in there and stuff. We're gonna yep. licorice and uh, Ooh. fun dip and shit, so they fun dip, yes, yeah. So get up some Dunkaroos. It'll be good. Yeah, we'll have fun. Yeah, and like I said, October twenty eighth, next weekend, where it's going down at Lucky Star Brewery in Miamisburg. Can't wait. We are gonna kill it. I hope. If we don't kill it, they're gonna kill us. <laughs> and I don't want that to happen. Then you guys are gonna have to get really baggy shirts made with our pictures with our sh- pictures on the shirts. Yeah, R.I.P. R.I.P. And get like a white silhouette background yeah, with clouds. Put a little uh, halo above my head. Oh, yeah. You don't have to do that for me, but I just want a shirt. All right. And I shared it on Instagram this week, but Donald Trump is allowing the release of certain documents. Ah, oh, yes. For the JFK assassination that have never been publicly released before. We have a Instagram listener. I'm going to verbatim tell you what she said. This is uh, from Cassie Daisy. Cassie Daisy, thank you for listening. We appreciate you listening. Thank you. She said it's absolutely nothing to do with Trump. He's taking credit for this, but he has nothing more than... It's just a matter of him being in in office at the right time. Congress mandated in 1992 that all assassination documents be released within 25 years of it happening. The only thing Trump can do is try and block the declassification if he thinks it will cause any harm by releasing them. So the only things he is doing is not blocking them. Please give credit where credit is due. So I guess they have released information already on it. A lot, of, a lot of things have been redacted. Um, I think it was like 50 years afterwards. They released a lot of documents. <clears throat> um, but yeah, hopefully there's you're, a lot more good stuff. Coming you're my out. brain trust on this one. Cause I'm not a hundred percent researched in that. Yeah. I, I, I could probably use a touch up on it, but that, that's my, that's my bread and butter. I love that. Who shot him? <laughs> Who? Yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. It could be a number of people. I know who it was. We'll go. We'll, we'll get. We'll eventually get into an episode, but it'll have to be a huge episode on it. Yeah, it's gonna be like a. It's gonna be a six part, a nineteen parter. I do know who shot him though. Let's hear it. It was Bill Wilkins. <laughs> <laughs> he was taking a shit, <laughs> and he grabbed his gun. I did hear something kind of funny this week. Mm-hmm. We're talking about Halloween stuff. And I saw this on Facebook. It says if you say raise, like raise the roof, mm-hmm. up, lights, that's how you say razor blades in Australian. Uh, Australian. So it's like, raise up lights. <laughs> I, got an, <laughs> I got an apple full of razor blades if you little shits don't get off. You mates don't get off my front door. I got apples with a bunch of razor blades in them. <laughs> Just say raise up lights. That's how you say razor blades. Australian. It's so stupid. <laughs> I got a pocket full of raise up lights. If you stick your hand in here, you got cut your fingers off. Uh, I, I can I can hear it. I don't it's, know if I said the F word during that rant. I hope I didn't. You did say shit, but. No, that's okay. But it's cool. I think I can say shit and hooker. Okay. That should be fine. I'm thinking that should be okay. I would think so. We have to find out if there's going to be kids there. Yeah. I don't know. It seems like a, it's a family-friendly town. You never know. 
Oh, we can just shame the parents if they bring them. If you have your kids at a brewery after 8 o'clock, you're a piece of shit parent anyways. Not any worse than Rob and I, but you're a piece of shit. <laughs> My kids would probably be there. <laughs> right? <laughs> They're going to be the ones getting me beer. Here is a bag of Skittles. Just rip it open like a bag of dog food. Yeah, just eat on this. Daddy be done in an hour. Just sprinkle them all over the floor. <laughs> Go chase them. Yeah, so like I said, we're doing um, Halloween murders and mayhem this week. Some good spoopy things. We have a bunch of stories. Yeah, spoopy. That our uh, our friend Courtney <laughs> coined that term, spoopy. Spoopy. Not spooky. We got spoopy stories. I like it, though. I think it's kind of half spooky, half poopy stories. <laughs> we don't have very many poopy stories today. Uh, we, we'll find an end somewhere, though. Yeah. Um, I would also like to tell you, if you like us, review us on iTunes. We had lots of uh, new reviews this week. We're super proud of those. Thank you very much. Super, ha- super happy you guys are <laughs> spoopy happy. <laughs> <Not> spoopy. <laughs> We're poopy happy you guys are listening to us. <laughs> Downloads went up again this week. Yes, thank you guys Completely very much. awesome. All because of you. We are so appreciative of you guys. We, we don't do anything. Uh, for the most part, we are incredibly shitty human beings yeah we're the worst of the worst we really are i pick my kids up from school in tidy whities <laughs> in a sweatshirt an old notre dame sweatshirt i don't even like notre dame yeah we are shitty human beings yeah but we, somebody's got to do it we are so appreciative of you guys and your support we really are and with that being said <laughs> i would like to point you towards our patreon that we never really Pushed very much. Just a little bit, but not too much. Patreon.com slash Brohio Podcast. We're going to try to get things up and going and se- keep it super sexy over there. What I'm thinking is, I have a really crappy microphone. Rob has the industry standard. Mm-hmm. He's got the Joe Rogan microphone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to be like Rob. This is the this is the Michael Jackson beat it microphone here. <laughs> I bet it is. <laughs> I, I did a similar thing on that microphone when you <laughs> weren't here. So we want to give enough money together, something close to where we can get me a microphone. That's our that's our Patreon project. Yeah. So if you want to shoot us a dollar, anything helps. If all you guys send us a dollar, then we'll have entirely too much money. We'll waste it all on blow. We got some cool things cooking up for people that are yes. that are patrons. So. Shirts and stickers and all that stuff. Bonus episodes. Yeah. There's a apparently there's an old VHS of Rob and I having sex in high school. You get a copy of that. If you donate fifty dollars or a hundred dollars or something like that, yeah. And there's not really a VHS, so if you do donate that much, we're gonna have to make one, <laughs> which I'm fine with. Would have been better if it was in high school. We'd have been in our glory days. Then. That's what friends are for. <laughs> the good times. I'll lay it down right now. I don't care. Who cares? It apparently takes one thousand six hundred and twenty-seven candy corn. To kill you, according to a 2016 New York Post article. I think I've gotten close to that. I, I, I love candy corn for about like 17, dude. And then once I'm like, once I hit the 18 mark, I'm like, these fucking suck. The one thing that you don't see very much during the year that you get a lot of at Halloween, uh, milk duds. Oh yeah, God, those hurt your teeth. Yeah, they're so good. They're really good, but yeah, you, you're eating them for hours. You go to the do- you go to the dentist, and he's <laughs> like, "Oh, I was checking out your mouth here, and you got uh, you got the Pangea fault going all the way down and around. You got about seventeen of them crater holes right there." Yeah, I like milk duds. And the only way I can get them to go away is if I put my dick in your mouth. <laughs> whoa, whoa, doc, doc, sign me up, doctor. You didn't have to ask. Well, will my insurance cover that? Is <laughs> yeah. as 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 that does that lower my copay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We have a lot of stories. Hopefully, we can get through all of them. Um, first, here we're going to go with Harry Houdini, ooh, the magician, Harry. the world, <laughs> good old Harry, Terry Barry, suck my Harry. <laughs> he was a famous magician. Dear, uh, magician, musician, <laughs> musical magician. He, he was, was a, the OG David Blaine. Yeah, he was around. <laughs> David Blaine's a piece of shit. <laughs> I love that dude. God, he's <laughs> the creepiest dude <laughs> ever, man. His, his, he has that face. It looks like he's always sleeping. I have no trust for that man. 
<laughs> he looks like the kind of guy that shits and doesn't wipe. I love it. I love that dude so much. <laughs> he's so you. he's so fun to watch. <laughs> um, allegedly, Harry Houdini died of an infection caused by a ruptured appendix in room 401 of Grace Hospital in Detroit. He was 52. <sighs> but there is a huge conspiracy behind Harry Houdini. The funny part about him is I asked you, this could be one of those Mandela effect things. You thought he died. Um, I, I thought a long time ago he died in a river trying to get out of a, you know, like the barrel. State, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. But he actually died from a ruptured appendix. Allegedly. Yeah. I there, thought he, I thought he died doing an escape. He was performing an act and he broke his ankle and the, and he got an infection from it. And the doctor said, you got to take some time off. And Harry Houdini being the badass that he is, he just vanished out of the doctor's. <laughs> I don't know that. I can't. I, I don't know that for sure. But he went against the doctor's orders. He continued his road show. I'm not sure what state he was in, but he was somewhere up north east, I do believe. And it was a college. And he goes to the. He goes backstage and he's looking for a spot where he can kind of chill out before the show. And they say, "Hey, we got this couch over here. You can just sit down, snort your uh, cocaine off the arm of the couch there." And uh, they give him a few minutes, and then some kids come, some college kids come back, and they they get to meet him and get his autograph and whatnot. And one of the kids says, "Hey, is it true that you can withstand exceptionally hard blows to your stomach?" And because <laughs> I guess part of uh, Harry Houdini's shtick was he could do not only you know magical tricks, he could also do feats of strength and like feats endurance of and- like enduring pain. And this kid says, hey, I heard that you can endure, you know, heavy shots to the stomach. Ugh. And Harry Houdini's like, well, I guess <laughs> in the fucking. Ki- oh, I said the F word. Sorry. <laughs> the kid <laughs> punches him in the stomach, just, you know, draws back and sends a nasty Conor McGregor right into his belly button. Ugh. It folds him like a lawn chair. From that minute, from that moment on, he complained from these complained these like severe pains in his stomach that uh, apparently was his appendix that had ruptured. But if you read a little further into it, he had, he spent his entire adult life trying to dis disprove spiritualists and, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like palm readers. Yeah. And psychics, psychics. He vehemently tried to discredit the discredit their work and try to put them out of work. I don't know if that's like a, you know, a magical turf thing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, hey, uh, don't come up here wait, wait, waving your wand around like it's right. the biggest wand in town. Look at the size of this wand right here, you piece of shit. You yeah, that's. Of- I, I wonder if they have beef. It's like the Bloods in the Crips. Chloe, you take your fake ass Jamaican ass back to <laughs> wherever. Your fake Jamaican accent. Back to wherever. <laughs> was was that was that her name, Chloe or Cleopatra or Lady Cleo? Cleo. Yeah, Lady Cleo. Same thing. Yeah. Oh, let me tell you my fortune. <laughs> yeah. For three thirty-five easy payments of twenty-nine ninety-five. Some of you guys may not remember Lady Chloe. Uh, yeah. Or Cleo. Cleo. Yeah. She's a Jamaican lady. Yeah. She Anyways, was, she was the infomercial queen. They they think that the kid that punched him in the stomach was kind of sent by the spiritualists, or Ooh. prior date, they think that he was possibly poisoned by the spiritualists, mm. or a spell was cast on him. And this was a slow death. His intestines were just slowly giving up on him. Whenever he went to the hospital, they went to operate, and his intestines were completely... They were, the appendix had already ruptured, and it was just toxic at that point. He was done. There Ugh. was no... You're, just, you're gonna die, Harry. That can't be no, any, any good. And I was looking at pictures of him. Really handsome guy. Mm. I definitely let him squat on my face. Why not? Yeah. So... Let's uh, let's move on here. <laughs> so these are these are mostly weird. Our deaths are surrounding Halloween. Yes. Um, you got some little snippets here to start with. Yeah. The next one is that uh Laura Aim. Yeah. She was a uh, seventeen. Actually, she was one of the uh, Ted Bundy's first or one of his, Ted Bundy's victims. That's another one we'll have to get to. Is Ted Bundy disappeared in Utah? Mm, Utah. Utah. Color me dead. Yeah. <laughs> then you got the death of River Phoenix. Yeah, Joaquin or Joaquin. He's never gotten over that. No. Yeah. Poor guy. I remember when River Phoenix died. I had no idea who the fuck he was, but I know my mom <laughs> threw a big fit about it. <laughs> Your mom was upset. 
He so, was on my stories. Did you did, did you hear the River Phoenix? I, who the fuck is River Phoenix? He's like, I'm thinking it's a place. Yeah, like, like a river that dried up. Yeah. <laughs> the river's dead. We got to in Arizona, no fucking wonder. <laughs> yeah. It's a desert, mom. <laughs> Stupid bitch. Like, is that really surprising? <laughs> and in October of 1918 was the deadliest month of the Spanish flu outbreak. And anytime I call into work, I have to fill out paperwork. And I always write down Spanish butt flu, and they never know what it is. I just It's a diagnosis. I've made it for myself. Good. But this was actually a strand of H1N1, and I was looking at the, st- the statistics of this one. Um, it says that over 200,000 people died just in that October 1918 alone. Spoopy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in total, this is, I've read conflicting accounts but anywhere between 50 to 100 million people died from this flu in two years and it affected around 500 million which is a third of the earth's population that's gangster that means that if you lined up everyone around the world that there would be no two people touching hands that didn't have the flu <laughs> then everybody would get it we've, at that point. <laughs> yeah we've all got, we've all got the butt flu <laughs> let's just let's just have lots of sex Spread the butt flu. Might as well. We we were a good race for a while. <laughs> Let's just end it all. We tried so hard. Yeah, we, did. we did the best we could. God needs to just bulldoze this piece of shit. Yeah. Start over. <laughs> Satan, who's ever up there? Yeah, it's... Uh, we're it's de- a, yeah, it's a dice, dice roll. We're definitely devil worshippers. Yeah. <laughs> Speak, well, speaking of devil worshiping stuff, we got some really cool episodes coming up that we thought of today that I'm yeah. really excited for. Yeah. Secret. Secret society. <laughs> we ain't telling. If you donate a bunch of money on Patreon, I'll tell you anything you want to know. <laughs> I'll be your own personal cam girl. Oh, dude, that'd be cool. Yeah. They'll turn the... My camera will come on and I'll be standing there in a fruit striped shirt. Some really, oh, yeah. <laughs> some, some of those gingerbread man boxers they sell at Walmart around Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> what you thinking about <laughs> oh hi you thinking about these hairy thighs with this bald patch in the middle from where my thighs touch is that what you like how about oh, gosh. how about these stretch marks on the back of my ass you like that what's that doing for you where'd you go she signed off she signed off the screen went black what happened she signed off <laughs> we can go to white castle let's go <laughs> it's your one person that watches <laughs> I got my my job's over for the night. <laughs> and from there, we go to, looks like the death of uh, Chris Jenkins. Yeah, I read about this one today. Yeah. It's a good one. This is back in 2002. Um, this is the... That's what Creed was on top of the world. <laughs> the University oh, of yeah. Minnesota oh, student... Yeah. <laughs> the University of Minnesota student left a party and went to the Lone Tree Bar and Grill in downtown Minneapolis. <laughs> Uh, he was ejected a few hours later by two off-duty officers working security, and um, there were uh, conflicting opinions as to why, you know, as to why that happened. He was only wearing his American Indian costume. <laughs> he had no coat, wallet, cell phone, or keys to his car or his apartment. Uh, now, yeah, I see this. I see this here. that says it's in the thirties. The, the, the traditionally. You know that area of the country, it's in the 30s, but that night it was in the 20s. Yeah, so it's it's cold. It's colder than a witch's tit and brass brawl. <laughs> exactly. Now, when he was reported missing, police believed he tried to walk to the Hennepin Avenue Bridge home. That's how? about one and a half miles, or about 1.2 miles from the bar. How shit ripped do you have to be to fall <laughs> off of a bridge? Jesus. Drinking? How many how many Jaeger bombs to the butt does that take? <laughs> Six. Three. Three for me. I'm a lightweight. <laughs> now, he was not seen on surveillance cameras from the Hennepin Avenue Bridge. Uh, so, at this point in time, we still have no clue where he is. Now, scent dogs had been sent out. They were bloodhounds. I looked it up. Uh, they, <laughs> these, these weren't Rottweilers or Bagels. These were these were real-life bloodhounds. These are the bloody hounds. They yeah. they were sent out you know, to do some traces to see if they could find them over to the pizza shop across the street. The dogs went and got a couple slices. Uh, <laughs> the dude got drunk and got pizza. There's nothing abnormal about that. Nothing at all. And uh, done with his problems. Yeah. I'm not checking back in. I would have went to Waffle House myself, but it's oh, all right. God. And then from you like shit and blood. I love it. And then from the bar to a parking garage where blood was found. 
Oh, no. And I could never confirm reading these reports whether it was his blood or it was just random blood. Who knows? It could have been part of the mystery. Yeah. It's uh, spoopy. Vampire blood. <laughs> right. Ooh, yeah. In you know, the spirit of this episode, we're gonna we're gonna say it was vampire blood. Sure. Vampire. Vampires. Now four months later, Chris's body is found on the east side of the Mississippi River. Now police ruled it as an accidental drowning, but others felt very differently. His oversized slip on shoes were still on his feet, which you think they would have fallen off? <laughs> slip on shoes. <laughs> He was lounging in his Indian there outfit and his slip on his shoes. Yeah. And, in, and his shirt was tucked into his pants. He's, he's keeping it proper, which people argue what kind wouldn't of have Indian, happened. What kind of Indian walks around with a shirt tucked into his pants? It was just tucked into his underwear. John Redcorn. Yeah, John Redcorn. I, I'm here to. Uh, I applied for the mechanical engineering position you had open. He had a. Uh, he had hair clenched in his hand, in his left hand, and then there was a date rape drugs found oh, in his system. Man, so this poor guy was date raped. He got that ass taken to Pound Town for sure. <laughs> it was just somebody who had a really big Indian yeah. fetish. I'm really sick. You railing my ass. Can you just throw me in the river, please? I've always loved Pocahontas. <laughs> po- Pocahontas. <laughs> See what you did there. I'll be, I'll be your John Smith. That was actually that was rather professional. Yeah, I like that. It's kind of racist, but <laughs> Jan Jenkins, his mother, wrote a book in which she added these details that the owner for the Lone Tree told him employees or told employees not to speak to police following Chris's disappearance. That's but, not suspicious. <laughs> when Chris was ejected from the bar, he wasn't allowed to grab his phone or his keys. And a girl Chris had been possibly dating was affiliated with one of the off-duty officers that threw him out. And that's, she may have worked at the bar as well. And that's an exceptionally subjective statement, that he was affiliated. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Yeah, it's really weird weird words there. Now, Chris was found hung up on a tree at the St. <laughs> Anthony Falls, and the tree was determined not to be indigenous to the downtown area. <laughs> Someone, someone just dropped the tree there. He was hung up on a California redwood, so <laughs> we think someone killed him and dragged his ass to California. Yeah. And he rode this log back. <laughs> he just hitched a ride on the log. He rode on this Bill Wilkins log <laughs> down the river. And his autopsy was found to have the date rape drug GHB and a liver sample. Uh, also determined he I had... I hope you like these tacos, because I got some GHB in them. You know what that means? Um, no. What's it mean? It means, you, it means you're getting your shit pushed in all the way later. All the way. Do you like it with your face crammed in the pillow? Oh, man. That's <laughs> a horrible, horrible, horrible joke for a horrible song. <laughs> now, also determined he had bruises that he always had due to playing lacrosse. But this points him to being held for three to four days between him disappearing and being killed. And one of the off-duty officers was not interviewed by investigators. And when questioned... Keep up the good work. (laughs) When when questioning this, Chris's parents were told they weren't going to break up a family (laughs) as Officer Casey was married with kids and his relationship with Chris's girlfriend would be detrimental. Which means you can do whatever... If you have kids... Yeah. You can do whatever you want. Right. And we still don't know exactly what happened to him. But in uh, 2006, his body was reclassified as a homicide. Yeah, because I can't imagine that uh, he did that himself. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. He's just shoving GHB up his asshole and floating down logs <laughs> and just dressed as Pocahontas. And the thing, and a handful of hair. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, I was fighting a werewolf. <laughs> I was out scouting the woods because I was an Indian that night. And I was scouting the woods. I got in a confrontation with a werewolf. He kicked my ass, but my shirt didn't come untucked. <laughs> Fell into the water. Got to keep it fancy, And that's man. why I'm here, Jesus. <laughs> my shoes stayed on and all. <laughs> yeah. I got my moccasins on. No disrespect to this deceased. Not at all. We love you, Chris. Yeah. I miss you. R.I.P. Then we have another story here. Days before Halloween in 2014, witnesses saw a man drag a decapitated body <laughs> out of a Long Island apartment into the middle of the street. He kicked the head to the opposite side of the street. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible. What kind of sound does a decapitated head make when you kick it? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> I think it would make like a, you know, like a one of those type deals, something like that. I don't know. I'm sorry. He kicked the head to the opposite side of the street. Everyone who saw this thought it was a Halloween prank. How how jaded is America? Oh gosh, that's <laughs> there's an ISIS science experiment going on in the street, and they're like, "Oh, it's not shit. These YouTube sons of bitches always trying to make make a dime off of a laugh." You got a good foot on you, buddy. And Did you play soccer? And I've seen so many pranks on YouTube now that anything I see now, I'm like, "Oh, that's fake." Yeah, it's all fake. That's fake. Yeah, YouTube pranks are the worst. There's a, there was one today I saw of a guy up in a tree, and they're cut. They're like, "Come down from there, hippie tree hugger." And he's like, no, this is my tree. Oh, I'm yeah. not coming down. And the guy just cuts it down anyways. Cu- and it just so happens it's hanging over. It falls a- in water. Yeah. Fake. Yeah. If you are listening, news. you're fake pieces of shit. <laughs> just like that Brohio podcast on YouTube. <laughs> fake pieces of shit. <laughs> With grenadine. Yeah. Go check them out. Tell them they're pieces of shit. They're awesome. Yeah. <laughs> if you're into shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they thought it was a Halloween prank until someone went to remove the body from the middle of the street. Police were fast to discover the body was Patricia Ward, a 66 year old professor at New York Farmingdale State College. She obviously didn't Poor grade. Lady. Yeah, she did not grade on the curve for sure. <laughs> Definitely. She was a bitch. <laughs> Even before discovering her body, police had received another call about another dead ward. <laughs> Jeez. This one had been run over by a train. Oh, my God. This poor family. About a mile down the road. Soon, the tragic details of the murder came to light. Patricia's son, 35-year-old Derek Ward, had a history of mental illness. But he seemed to be on the road to recovery when he moved into the small Farmingdale apartment with his mother. Then, for some reason, he snapped. He beheaded his mother, then dragged her body out of the apartment, down the stairs, and through the front door of the building. How does... Oh, my gosh. No No one hears this. This is in New York. <laughs> right. You can't like, you can't fart in New York without peeling somebody's eyelashes back. Hey, yeah, buddy, was that you to just shit your pants? Yeah. Somebody farted, and I can, I can taste, you guys, you're the nastiest bunch of people I've ever been around my entire life. You know that? I'm, I'm really upset about this fart. I don't care about the, the guy over the dragon, his dead mom down the stairs. I just want to know who farted in my mouth. <laughs> I read this thing, speaking of farts. I read this thing. I said this, this is a person who uh, gets in elevators with people. Then they fart. And then or he farts. And then after he farts, he goes, I smell popcorn. Do you guys smell popcorn? <laughs> so up. that everybody inhales. <laughs> and, then he, <laughs> and then he just smiles. <laughs> oh, someone burnt the popcorn. I was like, that guy's a hero. <laughs> yeah. Legend. After leaving the body in the street, he calmly walked away and leaped in front of an oncoming train. Oh, okay. As to why he did it, no reason was discovered. And this, um, well, of course not. He jumped into a fucking train. This was taken from Listverse, as we get a lot of cool stuff from Listverse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, next, let's go to uh, Richard. Is that Bigenwald? Bigenwald? Bigenwald. Bigenwald. Yeah. He's a, uh, a surreal killer. Yeah, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, <laughs> suffered huge amounts of childhood trauma and beatings and he also had an alcoholic father which um childhood abuse is a uh pretty it's a prevalent good, f- thing. good factor yeah for yeah. for serial killers Most, and i was when i did read about this guy his dad used to just beat the shit out of him he was he stayed drunk all the time but this kid was kind of doomed from the start he was a, a goddamn terrorist from the second he was yeah. put on earth until he left the earth. Yeah, just to give you a little bit of an idea here, at the age of five, he set his house on fire. Not a big deal. At nine, he received electroshock therapy. And he was healed by Jesus. <laughs> and then at 11, this is this is crazy one, at 11, he attempted to set himself on fire. What drives, so, what drives an 11-year-old? You know, I had some pretty fucked up thoughts in my head when I was 11, um, but uh, never did I come across... The idea of, you know what, sounds good. I'm going to set my fucking self on fire. I was always really worried about who was going to be number one on TRL. Yeah. Carson, Carson Daly. I would think about that all day. It was always in sync or Backstreet Boys. I remember it was Genie in a Bottle a or lot. Britney I Spears, specifically yeah. remember Genie in a Bottle being on top for quite a while. Tom Green hit number one for a day. Yeah. <laughs> bum, bum song. Bum song. Bum song. My bum is on the Swedish. <laughs> so, Swedish. <laughs> so good. I miss, I miss Tom Green show. Um. Now, one of his estimated 
five murders happened on Halloween. This is in uh, 1981, 17-year-old Maria Cialella. Cialella. Cialella, okay, And the thing about her, she told her parents, I read about this, Okay. she told her parents that she was going out trick-or-treating, trick-or-treating, yeah. but she was really going out, they call it, back then, they called it the night of mischief. She was going yeah. out to ring people's doorbells and take off running oh, and toilet bitch. paper toilet paper people's shit. And she got picked up by a serial killer. So here is the moral of this story, kid. <laughs> Kids. Don't mess with people's shit. Mind your own fucking business. This guy wasn't a serial killer. He was just pissed off that someone rang his doorbell and then took off running. You done fucked up. You little hey, Aaron. Piece of shit. <laughs> now, at midnight, a patrolman spotted her out by herself. Around 10 minutes later... He had turned back around to her. Yeah. He was responding to a call, and he, yeah. made a, he made a mental note. He said, hey, I got to come back and pick her up. Yeah, she needs a ride. She was gone. Now, her corpse was found in three pieces and buried in his yard at his mother's house on Staten Island. Mm. So that's that's fun. That's some heavy shit. Yeah. So That's another Halloween murder for you. Spoopy. The cop would have picked her up the first time around had she been carrying a case of Budweiser. <laughs> Definitely. Why not? Yeah. Uh, let's hop on over here to one of these other stories. For hours, motorists simply drove past. This is I don't know her name. This was a woman hanging from a tree. <laughs> they they saw her. She was hard to miss, dangling four and a half meters, fifteen feet. Almost directly over the road, but but uh, considering the season, they just assumed it was another morbid decoration. It was four days before Halloween, and Frederica, I'm sorry, yeah, and Frederica, Delaware, was littered with glowing jack lanterns, stuffed witches, and plastic skeletons. This body, however, was real. Police were called to the scene hours after the woman was first seen, and it's likely that she had been hanging there all night. Police only revealed that the woman was 42 years old. And it looked like she hanged herself. This isn't the last time a Halloween hanging has been uh, disregarded as decor. In 2015, a woman in Ohio was hanging Ooh, from a fence. Represent. <laughs> Stand up, bro. Ohio. Yeah, what up? I'm about to hang myself from this <laughs> fence, bitches. <laughs> oh, H. <laughs> <laughs> in Ohio, Ohio was hanging, she was hanging from a fence for hours before anyone mustered up the curiosity to see why this bitch was hanging herself on her fence. <laughs> You know what? Um, if if you're gonna hang somebody, I think the perfect night to do it would be Halloween or around that time. Um, listen, I got a lot of shit going on in my life right now. I don't have time to hang somebody. Yeah, but to you, um, officials from the FBI and CIA that are currently listening to us, that was Rob that said that. <laughs> as far as hanging people, <laughs> Rob from Ohio. I mean, that's why it goes unnoticed because people are going to think it's fucking decorations. Yeah. And then a big thing around Halloween is to dress up like, a, you know, a, a jack lantern, jack lantern, hay man. Yeah. And sit on your front porch and scare the shit out of little kids. Make a little, put little tootsie rolls in their underwear. <laughs> <laughs> How you like that, you little sons of bitches? <laughs> that teach you to come out for the night of mischief. Shoes you. Yeah. On to, on to the, this, I like this one. This is the. Aaron Thomas. Yeah, a Aaron. East Coast Rapist. A Aaron I'll Thomas. You, I'll let you grab the rape. I'll let you grab the raper. <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Get me all happy over here. <laughs> this is a uh, 1997 to 2009, which is a good little spree there. He has a pretty good resume. Yeah. This <laughs> is fairly recent. So his last victims were raped on Halloween of 2009. This is Dale City, Virginia. He abducted three teenage girls and raped two of them. So, he's, you know, let the other one. Well, she's, she's thought. Yeah, the next that. line you see that he raped one less too yeah. many. Yeah. Now, one managed to text her mom. This is in quotes. Man raping my friend in the woods behind CVS. Call 911. That's what we have come to in this generation. Your friend's getting raped and you text mom because. I'm sure there was probably some, you know, Obviously she, she, circumstances there. Yeah, she probably didn't want to make it obvious that she was on the phone. Yeah. But still, just dial it, just let it, I mean, man, well, mm-hmm. I guess at the same time, if you just let it let it call out, then yeah. it's, you still don't necessarily know what's going yeah. on. I'd hate for you to kill me here at 2725 Main Street, <laughs> Please, East yeah. Delaware, Wyoming City, 
Utah. Please quit raping me behind this CVS <laughs> on yeah. Yeah, 6th Street. <laughs> be kind of suspicious. Oh, now, the Halloween rapes drew more attention than any other of the previous cases because the attack, the attack involved three teenage trick-or-treaters. Unfortunately. Yeah. Now was arrested on March 4th, 2011, due to what was stated as DNA matching. Um, he did attempt to hang himself the next day in his jail cell. And he failed. And he failed. he sucked. Good. And March 31st... I don't, I don't know how they got his DNA. Um, he skated for a long time. And when they did arrest him, he was... He was upset. He's like, what took y'all so long? He was up. Like, he was pissed off. He was tired. He said, I'm tired of being like this. I'm tired of living this way. And this guy was such, I mean, there was one point that he went, he had a, a lot of, he did a lot of rapes mm-hmm. and he had this fascination of climbing in people's windows and raping them. And he, at one point he went to his dad's house and his family recalls this such because this, this was like a family man. He had kids and a wife, and they say he was a good dad. And he was down to earth, and he was a good friend to a lot of people. But he was just like caught up with raping people. Jeez. They raping everybody, right? And he went to his dad's house. He's like, "Dad, what a weird hobby. You have to keep your windows locked all the time." And his dad's like, "Boy, I ain't gotta do shit. You, I'm, I'm gonna rape you. I ain't gotta do shit. You tell me to do, boy." And he's like, "Dad, you gotta." You gotta lock these windows up because people are coming in with erections <laughs> and they're shoving them in people's asses. They're raping everybody out here. And I'm Batman. <laughs> Your son is Batman. The Bat Raper. Oh gosh. Yeah. Good old Christian Bale. And he had a this guy had a span. He did not cover just one concentrated spot. He was all over America. I guess if you don't want to be caught, I mean, I guess it's just driving yeah. around raping people. What are you doing? <laughs> You're doing what? I'm just driving around waving to people. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I, I, I thought you said raping people. Oh, hell no, man. <laughs> hell, I ain't raping nobody. That's my dad. <laughs> That's, <laughs> He's the one that won't lock his windows. That's senior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On March 31st, 2013, he was sentenced to three life sentence terms in prison, plus an additional 80 years for his Halloween 2009 attack on the three teenage girls. But uh, this case is super crazy, and they have been, you know, other reinstatements of his crimes, and more time has been added to him. Yeah, they can't nail down exactly how much he's done. Right. The things keep on popping up. Yep. And there's the point now they're. They'll get another rape victim, and they'll get the DNA, and they're like, all right, just throw this one out. Yeah. Throw it out. He's already going to die. Yeah, and like we said, he, he he went all over the place. It looks like he attacked people at uh, Maryland, Virginia, Connecticut, and Rhode Island. So, And speaking from experience, if you have a problem with hemorrhoids or erectile prolapse, prison is an excellent alternative as far as getting those things medically handled. Yeah, I you guess can get so. all that stuff put back in you, and it doesn't really cost you anything. You can get the... You can do those exercises several times a day. People there to help you with There's it. There's plenty of willing willing people. They serve you food. They right. Take care of you. So if this is something that speaks to your heart, let us know. Three meals a day. Yeah. And let's let's switch over to the other side here for another story. All right. We're doing pretty good here. We're moving right along. We're scooting. We're moving right along here. On October 31st, 1979, 16-year-old Shirley Ledford was walking home from a party in the suburbs of Los Angeles when two kind men... (laughs) No! So nice. I'm calling bullshit right here. (laughs) I'm guessing they weren't kind men. (laughs) First first off, it's two men in a van. (laughs) When is that ever (laughs) a welcoming sight? I thought that it was a nice van because it had (laughs) curtains on it and there was an air conditioner in the back. So I said... Well, if I get hot, they can just turn on the air conditioner. And then all the all the windows are blacked out so the sun yeah. wouldn't get in my eyes. And we can open up the curtains when we when we look outside. <laughs> and then they started raping me. I don't know if this is a rape. Oh no. I just <laughs> I said rape. Way and, to go. And then one word below that says mutilated, so <laughs> sorry. And if <laughs> there was two kind men in a van who offered to give her a ride. The next morning <laughs> A jogger 
discovered her mutilated body in an ivy bed on the front lawn of a residential home. Poor thing. This seems like a good spot for a dead body. <laughs> it appeared to be a shocking random act of violence, but less than a month later, a tip from a former inmate put police on the trails of Roy Norris. Roy Norris. No relation to Chuck Norris and Lawrence Bittaker. An electrician and a mechanic who lived and worked in Los Angeles, it wasn't long before investigators discovered hundreds of photos of young girls. <clears throat> so, naturally, these pieces of shit need to have a dagger buried in their dick hole yes. and shot in the head. Yes. Um, they discovered hundreds of photos of young girls, bloodstained work tools, and chilling recorded tapes of women screaming and begging for mercy. Ugh. God damn it. The police had captured the toolbox killers, a serial a serial killing team that had abducted, tortured, and killed at least five teenage girls over the past few months. But the true barbarity of this two man torture team didn't come out until until Roy Norris made a full confession of their murders. Yeah, he did. He narked. <laughs> you snitching ass, <laughs> rat ass bitch. <laughs> you about to get this shank. You little bitch. Particularly gruesome was his description of what had happened after they coerced Shirley Ledford into their van that tragic Halloween evening. Bittaker was driving when they picked her up, and Norris offered her some weed. <laughs> hey, bitch, you want some weed? Yeah. <laughs> I got some of that good good in you. I got some of that Calif- California koozie. Some of that purple stank wank. Hop in. Stank wank. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> Get in. We got some stank wank for you. <laughs> just the strain they just like stir with their dicks. Yeah. <laughs> to which she refused the marijuana. Norris then got behind the wheel while Bittaker slid into the back with Shirley. Um, for the next two hours, all Norris heard was screams, constant screams. That's quote from the back. While Norris calmly piloted them through the bustling streets of L.A., Bittaker beat her with his fists, broke her elbows with a sledgehammer, and sodomized her with a pair of pliers. Ooh, God geez. damn it. That's rough. I have had a lot of stuff in my ass. Ugh. I would not want pliers in there. <laughs> I would prefer something to start with a P, but not pliers. All of it was recorded on a tape recorder. Finally, Norris pulled over and strangled Shirley with a coat hanger that he clenched shut with pliers and the two dumped her body on a random front lawn. Apparently, Bittaker wanted to see the reaction of the newspapers. God damn what a it. fucking psychopath. Oh, man. When the body was... they wanted, Yeah, they wanted to see the reaction of the newspapers when the body was discovered. Bittaker received the death sentence, rightfully so, even though they don't do that in California, and Norris right. received 45 years to life. Proves that snitches only get, oh half, my get half the time. God. And to you, Mr. Norris and Mr. Bittaker, if you were listening... Listening to us on a smuggled cell phone right I now. I hope you are. I hope you fist yourself. I want you to dip your hand in like some bleach, and I want you to fist your dick hole right now. Do it, please. Unzip. Or bro, Ohio is not going any further. Stopping. I just need some wank stank in my life. <laughs> Give me some of that purple stank wank. <laughs> Let's uh, hang on one second here. What are you drinking? This is the last of my terrapin beers. It's and it's, it's foaming up it's here. It's running all over. <laughs> yeah, just chug it. You're fine. I'm good. All right. Next, Ronald O'Brien. This is the uh, the Candy Man. This is this is a really good a really good story. Um, this happened back in 1974. He was actually called the Man Who Killed Halloween. <laughs> what a cool name. It's yeah. It's really fucking cool. This is um. If I was a murderer. I'd want a cool name like that. This also kind of goes hand in hand with um, our section that we have on urban legends and myths for Halloween. Yeah. This guy is yes. the only documented case that we know of where Halloween candy has been poisoned. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, I forgot I read about this. Thing yeah. Too. He is one of the reasons, actually, pretty much the reason that we have. That's This the, is the reason you have the to check thumb, your kids' candy. You have to thumb through their. Candy. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid. When I was a kid, we had to dump all of our candy out once we got done. We had yeah. to go through all of it. If it was something that wasn't in wrappers, like if some fucking asshole gave you an apple, you'd have to throw it out. What about the six sons of bitches that just or, threw a handful of pennies in your yeah. pillowcase? <laughs> or like the Nutty Buddy oh. bars. We'd always get those too. And I'm like, God damn it. I- I'm coming back for your broke ass. <laughs> go give me an Almond Joy. Take your ass back in there and get me something with chocolate on it. Right. Get your ass the- back in there. Yeah. This, I don't want this sticky this penny with Diet Coke and hair on it. <laughs> dickhead now um ronald o'brien 
had a son named Timothy. He was eight years old. He was given um, a pixie stick that was laced with cyanide. Oh, man. Now, he attempted to give these to five children in total, two of which were his own. Um, he was wanting them to to eat them, and they would die, and then he would collect the insurance money. So what he did, I don't know if you're familiar with this, He they went to a house, and they knocked on the door, and nobody answered. Yeah. So he kept on waiting there. And he he they're out trick or treating with another family, the his kid, and the other kid took off running ahead. I think he had two kids, yeah, maybe, and then one kid that was, or yeah, something something like that. They take off ahead. He he catches up with them. He says, "Hey guys, uh, I got some pixie sticks that they handed to me after you took off running. He has some pixie sticks. Eat them up." Yeah, he. I think from what I read, he gave them the he gave them the five kids, but none of the kids ate them because none of them liked pixie sticks. Right. So, and, but he, they, they lucked out. They later saw another kid that he recognized from church because Ron was a church deacon. He was yeah. very active in the church. He was uh, sang in the choir, heavy in the, heavy in the ministry. Which this is kind of shocking. This goes to tell you that all religious people aren't good people. All people that go to church. Yep. Don't mean well for you. Yep. Which is completely that's news at eleven for me. Yeah. And um on the, the the children that there was one specific kid who took the pixie stick home. He wanted to eat it, but his mom wouldn't let him. <laughs> because this is one of those things, you know, you can't really tell if someone you know, I think from what from what I remember reading, he actually ripped them, put the cyanide in it, and then like stapled them shut. Sta- but I think back in the day that's how pixie sticks came. Uh okay. They were stapled, so easy. Nowadays target. nowadays that's you know Obviously, red flag. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think I'll just eat the staple, too. Yeah. He, of course, like I said, had taken out insurance policies on his children. He stated as, or he was stated as being cold and calculated and saw a means to an end to get out of debt. Well, he, they Simple said he was that. I, what year did this all happen? 1974. 1974. They yep. said he was over $100,000 in debt that he was, um, he had defaulted on a home loan. He defaulted on his car. It was in the process of being repossessed. He had several uh, lawsuits against him. This dude was, he was ass deep in some some problems. And he, he saw a kid from the church that he recognized, and he's like, uh, here, take this pixie stick. <laughs> he, was, he was the fifth kid. So what he was trying to do was, obviously, he knew these kids were going to die. So he was giving pixie sticks to all these different kids to make it look like it came from someone in the neighborhood. Try and con- confuse the police. Right. The sick piece of shit. So crazy. Sick he was, pieces of shit. He, of course, was executed uh, 10 years after his son's death. This was March 31st, 1984. So this was even before both of us were shot into this world. And the thing I, I was reading, I read a, a lot about this today. He had a, a stay of his execution. I think he was on death row. I think he had four to five different death ro- death dates. And then finally, I think this is... um. Was this in Texas? Um, this was... I don't remember. I see. can't remember where it was at. Anyways, finally, <clears throat> there's one new judge that takes on the um, the execution stay. And this judge says, quote, I will walk him to the gas chamber. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. fuck that guy. High five that guy. Yeah. <laughs> G.I. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this dude! I'm taking him personally yeah. to the gas chamber. And obviously, his son died. The only one that um, Timothy O'Brien, he was the only one that took the uh, cyanide. He immediately ran to the bathroom, and started vomiting and convul- yeah. um, convulsing, and he died in his father's arms shortly thereafter. <sighs> All for about. I think they said from this stunt he stood to make about sixty thousand dollars for all the deaths. The police came and part of their investigation. They're like, "All right, you piece of shit, where did it come from? If you did not poison your child, we're going to walk you around the neighborhood and you're going to tell us where you got these pixie sticks." And he says, "I got them from this house, right? Right? Yeah." Which is where I guess referred to earlier in the story where they knocked and nobody is home. The kids yeah. went ahead, and then he comes running up like, "Hey, I got these pixie sticks for you." He said, I got the pixie sticks from that house right there. They went to this guy's house. Uh, they took him in for an interview. 
they said, tell us what this guy looked like. And uh, Ron O'Brien says, I, I don't know what he looked like. It was just a, a hairy arm that barely cracked the door and stuck its arm out and dropped the pixie sticks in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Completely believable, dude. <laughs> Jesus. So they, they arrest. No, they don't arrest. They don't arrest the guy with the hairy arm. They just go interview him. <laughs> and they're like, hey, it was just an old lady that lived there. <laughs> where, where were you at on the night? Where are you at on Halloween? And he says, I'm an air traffic controller. I was at work till 11 p.m. So they went and got witness statements from. They got 500 witness statements from people that said he was at work that night. Jeez. So, yeah, Ron, your, Ron your plan Ryan, just goes down the fucking yeah. shitter. Well, I, I think it was a hairy arm. <laughs> it, it could have been a, a dog's paw. <laughs> <laughs> could have been his dog i'm not 100 percent sure maybe it was a smooth leg <laughs> i don't know i actually think it was it was a claw it was a lobster claw yeah i'm thinking back now it was a stag antler it was a giant rubber dick <laughs> we got unsheathed cobra it was a flashlight yeah <laughs> with pixie sticks sticking out imagine? of it <laughs> That's not illegal. <laughs> no. I'm doing it this year. I'm going to put my finger in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. <laughs> Trick or treat. <laughs> and they said when he was finally executed, that people gathered outside the death house. Good. Like a little vigil type thing. Fuck yeah. And they are all they are all chanting trick or treat. Good. Trick or treat. I'd have been trick roasting marshmallows. Yeah. Hope you die, you son of a bitch. Yeah, fuck that guy. He got what was coming to him. Good. Yeah, fuck you. Fuck you, asshole. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go to William Liskey Jr. here, 2010, stand up, Bro, Ohio again, Martin, Ohio. I think that's somewhere near. Oh, <laughs> somewhere near Cleveland, I think. Oh God, I'm not a hundred percent certain, but uh, if you live in Ohio, you're four hours from any part of Ohio. Yeah, yeah, so. it's a great place to yeah. live. Sixteen year old Devin Griffin comes into his family's home in Martin, Ohio, to find the bodies of his brother, mother, and stepfather. That sounds like. Good old orgy right there yeah, in Martin, Ohio. Good old trifecta. Teenager thought it was he thought it was a joke from a Halloween party. <laughs> Quit joking, guys. Yeah. Uh can you can you put your esophagus back in your throat now? <laughs> I don't like this joke. Put your blood back in your body. I don't yeah. like it. Eventually the stepfather's son William Liskey was arrested near the family's cabin hundred and seventy miles away from Martin. Mm. He had a exceptionally troubled past of mental health issues, schizophrenia. Um the means of which he used to execute the family, um, incredibly sick. He used a claw hammer Oof. on one of the victims, the brother. Yeah, that's those things aren't forgiving either. No, he used both ends of it. Uh, Ooh, he gosh. bludgeoned him to death. Then he also used a twenty two caliber handgun to kill the dad and the mother. But not to be outdone... He raped the stepmother after she was dead. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Oh, God. I I broke your head. Now I'm about to break your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so horrible. That is bad. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, Take that back. <laughs> All three victims are found in their beds with no visible signs of struggle. Oh, man. Uh, the murders were considered premeditated. No oh, shit. And he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Thank you, Ohio, for letting him live. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and that brings us to our next one. This is back in 1982. 69 year old Marvin Bradland lived with his wife, Ethel. No dirty Marv. <laughs> in Fort Dodge, Iowa. On Halloween that year, the Branlins were handing out candy to trick-or-treaters who came to their house. At one point, they answered the door and were surprised to see a man wearing a mask. He can said... I, can I fuck you with this green mask on? <laughs> he said, trick-or-treat, give me your money or I'll shoot. The Branlins thought someone was playing a Halloween prank, how do you of know course. He, how do you know he sounded like that? I'm, I'm just guessing. You're guessing? I, yeah. It's, All right. It, 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 yeah, I'm just All guessing. Right. All right. I'm just guessing. <laughs> And tried to remove the man's mask, but he wouldn't let them. <laughs> hey, you Pete. <laughs> give me that. Knock give it me off. That, give me that mask, you stupid son of a bitch. It's not a mask. That's my face. <laughs> Instead, the masked man entered the house and pulled out a gun. 
He demanded that the couple bring him down to the basement and give him all the money that they had stashed in their safe. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. So, red flag. So, the Brandlins became suspicious since very few people knew that they had a safe in their basement. So, this guy knew that he had a safe in the basement before he even got there. So, now, for this reason, Marvin was still convinced that a friend or a family member was simply playing a Halloween trick on them. I'll take the mask off as long as you let me in the safe. <laughs> all right. Now, when the masked man led the Brandlins through the kitchen towards the basement, Marvin made a grab for the gun. The intruder wound up... Give me that goddamn thing! (laughs) He shot Marvin in the throat before fleeing the house and inexplicably leaving his mask behind. Now, Ethel, of course, was so traumatized by her husband's death that she died only a few months later. Oh, man, that's true love right there. It is, yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Now, over the years, an book. acquaintance of the Brandlins family had alleged allegedly bragged about committing the murder, so DNA testing was performed on the mask. However, there wasn't enough usable material for an adequate test, so there is still no evidence to charge this suspect, and Marvin Brandlin's murder has still officially remained unsolved. Oh, man. What a bummer. That's terrible. Yeah. Well, I have a good one for you. This is the son of Sam. Oh, uh, yes. This is the uh, story of Ronald Sisman and Elizabeth Platzman. Uh, the son of Sam, Sam being David Berkowitz. Mm-hmm. We have to do an episode about him. Yeah. He's a good one. Big too. heavy hitter. Yeah. This couple, they were severely beaten uh, before they were shot in the head execution style. And anytime someone's shot in the head execution style... There's usually some type of motive behind it. Yeah, there's some point to be made. Whether it be drugs, religion, there's Gang. some type of motivation behind an yeah. execution-style yeah. killing. Police initially believe the crime was motivated by drug money, but then a... So, actually, David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, was, according to police, he had nothing to do with this murder. But there was a, a prison informant that stepped forward... A rat. Yeah. He claimed that a fellow inmate had predicted the crime the week before it happened. Yeah. That fellow inmate. Prison informant is just a fancy word for a snitch. Snitch. Yeah. I had lots of snitches in prison. We had had a lot of informants, too. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, He predicted the crime the week before it happened, which that fellow inmate was David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, the killer, the murderer. Um, The killings, though, are still considered unsolved. Due to no evidence supporting Berkowitz's claims, he was, he was, the police questioned him about a lot of things, and he could explain to a T what the inside of the murder victim's apartment looked like. And that's kind of why the police were, you know, yeah, they, they thought it could have been, he could have been related. Yeah. Yeah. Now, David Berkowitz alleged that the couple was in possession of a snuff film. And if you don't know what a snuff film is, That's it's a, a good f- shit. <laughs> it's a, f- it's a black market film yeah. of people being murdered yeah, or tortured or having porcupines shoved up their assholes, <laughs> all kinds of horrible shit like that. Not when I think is you hear smut and you think of that's like porn porn. Yeah. And then there's scat, which is that's where people shit, shit on, on each other. <laughs> and then there's snuff, which is people getting murdered. Berkowitz alleged that the couple was in pe- possession of a snuff film that was the f- the film was made during a cult murder. Yeah, not a scat film. And they're <laughs> no, that's <laughs> that's film in a bathroom <laughs> sometimes or on a tarp in your living room. I can say that from experience. <laughs> you gotta buy you gotta Listen, buy a glass table for that. There's there's moist. People don't like the word moist. Yeah, I don't like it. And the the c word the c word for women I don't say it cunt yeah I don't say it I like it it's a out of word. respect for oh, the very few women I have in my life <laughs> that are still around and then there's <laughs> scat <laughs> scat is the worst of the worst okay don't say scat <laughs> scat right <laughs> oh god <laughs> um, but David Berkowitz alleged that the couple was going to hand over the snuff film to the government and this would help them alleviate some drug charges that were come up, coming up against them. So they thought they were going to use the video to be set free and not have to face prison time for, for these drug charges. Um, 
Berkowitz was ultimately convicted of his series of murders in 1977. Obviously, like we said before, that case remains unsolved. But this is all over a scat film, over a video of people shitting on each other's faces. Very spoopy. Very spoopy. (laughs) So let's hop on over to Marilyn Dahman. We keep on saying hop on over because we have two different pages of research here. Yeah. We're we're just we're just trying to trying our best find a good transition here. Yeah, we have nothing. <laughs> Halloween, nineteen fifty five. Marilyn Dahman took her two year old son Stephen and seven month old daughter Pamela. It's Pamela. <laughs> Pamela. Pamela. To a supermarket in East Meadow, New York. While she went shopping, Marilyn let Stephen wait outside the store with his sister, horrible mom, Listen, who bitch. was <laughs> inside of a carriage. I. <laughs> I guess this is 1955. Things are a little yeah. bit different then. Uh, Stephen, if you stand here and watch your sister, uh, I'm going to give you a nice, rich glass of chocolatey Ovaltine, Ovaltine when we get home. <laughs> How's that sound, little Stevie? Oh, that sounds amazing, What if mother? somebody walks by and tries to abduct us? Oh, sweetheart, just go with them or you're not going to get that Ovaltine. <laughs> they may have other Ovaltines. <laughs> Now, ten minutes later... Chocolate peanut butter novel team. Ooh, ten minutes later, Marilyn exited the store and was shocked to discover that both Stephen and the carriage were gone. Who would have thunk it? It just sounds like a corny movie. Yeah, now, shortly thereafter, the carriage oh, was no. discovered about a block and a half away. However, even though Pamela had been left beside or behind inside the carriage... She talked too she much. Even, yeah, yeah. Stephen was nowhere to be found. He had not been seen since. In many cases where infants were abducted, it is theorized that the perpetrator wanted a child of their own or decided to raise the missing infant under a new name. That's so creepy. Or sent them into human trafficking. Oh. Which is terrifying. That is terrifying. Uh, and that, that still goes on. That's, God, oh, it's so much more prevalent now than it yeah, has than ever it been. ever was before. Now, over the years, DNA testing has been utilized in an attempt to determine if Stephen Dahman was ever given a new identity. Now, at one point, investigators noticed that Stephen bore a resemblance to the infamous boy in the box, <laughs> an unidentified child who was found murdered inside a cardboard box in Philadelphia in 1957. That was my porn name in college, was Boy in the Box. Boy in the Box. <laughs> they, Mine was Boy in the Closet. They called me Boing in the Box. <laughs> Boing in the Box. Boing in the box. <laughs> However, DNA testing would eventually confirm that Stephen and the Boy in the Box were not the same person. Darn. In 2009, a Michigan man named John Barnes came forward believing he might be Stephen, but DNA testing also ruled this out. I am really confused. (laughs) I think that I was stolen with my sister (laughs) in a carriage. Me and my sister at the Grand Canyon. (laughs) My real name is Nunnamaker. Don't try to church it up, Dirt. (laughs) Uh, oh geez that's space peanut now it is possible that an adult steven Dahman may be living under you know maybe living another life somewhere under a completely different identity unaware that he was once taken from his real family which is terrifying steven is maury povich yeah. <laughs> however however his whereabouts continue to remain unknown that's spoopy very spoopy <laughs> i think i just spooked my pants I, I did a little bit now we have the murder of martha moxley in 1975 martha this one's particularly interesting because it's full of government cover-up. Mm-hmm. Government corruption. Kennedy. Alex Jones. <laughs> Don't listen to me. I'm a fat piece of shit. Interdimensional child molesters. <laughs> Pizzagate. <laughs> Stupid. I love that dude. He's, uh, he's like the... Uh, it, the WWE's version oh of a news of a news anchor. He's such a fat turd. <laughs> He's God. so entertaining, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, sh- Martha Martha Moxley was found Halloween mor- yeah Halloween morning, nineteen seventy five, under a tree in her backyard, beaten to death with a golf club. Aww. Of all the ways, I don't want to go out. <laughs> put it at the top of my list under a tree. I don't want a <laughs> tailor made broken over my head <laughs> under a tree. Yeah, this thing's pretty resilient. Over the years, suspect Michael Skockel, which bears a very uh, close resemblance to the word scat. <laughs> hey, he was Michael f- shit. <laughs> yeah. He was 15 at the time of the murder. 
<laughs> and his alibis changed several several times. Get your story straight, Junior. He initially claimed that he'd been window peeping and masturbating in a tree beside mm. the Moxley property from eleven thirty to twelve twelve thirty a.m. That's an hour long masturbation session. <laughs> Jeez, good Christ. for him. <laughs> I think there was another episode. Uh, Gypsy Rose. Yes, Gypsy Rose. That nine guy, hours, nine hours baiting in the parking lot. Fuck, dude. That's a lot of French fries. Good did, for him. He did it in a McDonald's parking lot too. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Doing the Lord's work there. But old My- old Michael Skackle, he was Scat. he was jerking the gherkin from eleven thirty until twelve thirty outside of the Moxley property. Those are peak times, peak hours. And the thing about the Moxley family, I'm sorry, the Skackle family, the one who the the alleged perpetrator of the murder, the boys who were whacking in the camper, they were very close relatives of the Kennedy family. Yeah, they. I think they're. He's a nephew. Yes. Yeah. He's a nephew of Robert Kennedy. Right. Yeah. So there was an initial attempt, many believe, by the government to cover this up. Um, he went to prison for it and got sentenced to prison and bonded out of prison. And I've heard of this <coughs> happening before. Got the Kennedy me. money. How the hell do you bond out of prison? Out of prison? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. Yeah, you can bond out of jail if the if the uh, judge yeah. sets you a bail. Yeah. Usually on big cases like that murder or and stuff, they don't. Or if you're a Kennedy, you can bond out of jail. Yeah. Or prison, sorry. Yeah. 25 years went by until Michael Skakel was indicted for the murder in June 2000. Skakel is the nephew of Ethel Skakel Kennedy, who is the widow of Senator Robert F. Kennedy. Collusion. Yeah. Definitely some collusion going on right there. Poor Kennedys. So, and like I said before, he's been, this has been mistried several times, and he's been convicted and then mistried again, and this guy just keeps on getting away with it. He looks like a fat, nasty piece of (laughs) shit, like Rush Limbaugh got shit on by Santa Claus. He's disgusting looking. Old Rush. So, he's currently not in jail, again. I should. He's not in prison right now for this murder. He said, "Got that Kennedy money, man." The moral of the story here is: be born a Kennedy. And the the funny thing was, is that night the kids had ventured out for another night of mayhem. They were going out to you know mess with people's shit. Uh, the witnesses to the story said that they saw uh, Moxley, the female that was murdered. Sorry, her first name left me. Martha. They saw Martha with Michael Skockle's brother and they were making out and they mm. were finger blasting each other and shit. Yeah. And they went behind a fence and did what they did. But later on, Michael was coined for the murder. So I can't remember the brother's name. Um, I can't remember Michael Skockle's brother's name, but he was not. Just call him stank wank. Yeah. We call him stank wank. <laughs> He was making out with Martha. Okay. Getting some of that good good. Lip banging her. But the little brother, Michael, was convicted for the murder. So it sounds like he might have taken the fall for something there. Possibly. But it doesn't matter who takes the fall when you're a Kennedy. Mm -mm. And he even said that to his friends. They said, are you worried about going to prison? He said, I'm not going to prison. I'm a Kennedy. Quote, verbatim. Good for him. At least he knows where he knows where Where he stands, stands in the government hierarchy. Yeah. All right, we got some uh, funny stories left here for you. <laughs> well, they're not really funny, but they're kind of sad. But yeah. they're little, we both laughed at the same part. So <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let you take this one. It All right, breaks my heart. <laughs> oh, excuse me. A nine-year-old dressed in oh. a Halloween costume. <laughs> a nine-year-old dressed in a Halloween costume was accidentally shot by a relative who thought she was a skunk. Skunk. <laughs> the girl was. <laughs> But it's a pole cat. It's it's horrible. It's so sad. But I, I thought she was a nine year old. How big of fucking skunks do you have in that area? That thing, <laughs> a nine year old. A nine year old. My son is nine, and he's huge. He's huge. <laughs> Listen, you're at the front door. You look out and you see it. And you that's come back the in. Biggest damn skunk I've ever seen. That's dad, a, that's dad, a stinky dad, one. Dad, I think there's a crocodile or a skunk in the driveway. I'm not sure which one it is. I think it's a skunk because we don't have any crocodiles around here. Does it look like it could possibly be a nine-year-old child? No, no. Dad, it's definitely a skunk. No. Sk- <laughs> they're going to shoot it. It's extra spoopy. We're going to shoot it. <laughs> now, this girl 
stood outside of she, the girl stood outside of her Pennsylvania home during a party when the incident happened. Uh, police said the girl was wearing a black costume and a black hat with a white tassel. A male relative apparently mistook her for a skunk and fired a shotgun, hitting her in the shoulder, oh my arm, God. back, and neck. She was rushed to the hospital following the incident at Halloween last year. Mother. I don't know, I don't know when, if this was literally last year. Or I'm going to say it's last year. Okay. I don't like to check my resources. <laughs> According to this article, it was last year that the article was written. Yeah. So whatever art- year this article was written, it was the year before that. The mirror. Yeah. Check the mirror. mirror. UK. Dot co. Dot UK. Check it out. The moral of the story here is: don't shoot skunks. Let the conk. Let the let the conk. The conk. Let, let the conk live. <laughs> don't shoot spoopy conks. <laughs> They're nice. Spoopy. All right, and one of the most horrific recent events to happen on Halloween took place in Napa Valley, California. I think they make really good they wine. They make good up there. wine, yes. I think. This was in 2004. Housemates Adrian is- Isogna, Insogna. It looks like lasagna. lasagna. Yeah. Adrian Lasagna, Leslie Ann Mazzara, and Mozzarella. Lauren Minza had spent the evening handing out candy to trick or treaters. Sweet ladies. After going to bed. Lauren woke up to the sounds of Adrian <laughs> screaming at 2 a.m. <laughs> your mother showed us care about your schooling, boy. <laughs> she ran outside in horror, but after hearing screaming again, she ran back inside. <laughs> she then discovered both her friends had been stabbed and were barely alive. Stabbed. She again ran out. <laughs> she ran outside of the house again and called 911. Her two friends later died. Huh. The killer was Adrian's best friend's fiance, Eric Koppel, who committed the murders because he was jealous of the friendship between Adrian and his girlfriend. That's pretty justifiable. Yeah. I have like I don't like my wife hanging out with your wife. Yeah, let's let's kill him. They just talk shit about us. <laughs> they really do. <laughs> going up I'm going to get her right now. <laughs> I'm gonna go beat her ass. <laughs> Dad, wake up. <laughs> w- wake up. Get this get this graveyard Kmart story. I go upstairs and then you're just laying on the floor screaming. <laughs> just, just beating the shit out of you. Flipping my diddle. <laughs> I think this might be the last one. On that yeah, on that page. Oh yeah. The most frightening thing about the graveyard kit bought at Kmart was the note an Oregon woman found inside. It was written by a Chinese factory worker who claimed he and others were tortured and enslaved. And see, this is a real thing because yeah, this is sad. You get you people wait in line for your goddamn iPhones. I can say this because I, I have an Android. It's the worst phone I've ever owned, but it. It's, <laughs> I own one. Okay, they run these sweatshops over there in Taiwan and the Korea countries, um, and China. Obviously, they pay these workers nothing. They make them stay there. They make them live at their work. <laughs> I love my iPhone. <laughs> right. Rest S- labor, slave labor. You know, rest in peace, little chim. We <laughs> R.I.P. in peace. Yeah. Um, now, he claimed that he and others were tortured and enslaved and forced in you know labor camps, making toys fifteen hours a day with no pay or days off. He went to plead for the letter to be forwarded to the World Human Rights Organization. The woman did just that, and the Chinese worker was freed. When the camp was exposed. Well, look at later. that. That's a good bro Ohio story right a there. A good story to end it on. That's a good story of triumph. Way to grow World Human Rights Organization. Victory. Um, I I would like to say we're done there, but I have one more story. And there's nothing spoopy in that story. Right. That's our last good story. That's our <laughs> first good story. Our last good story. Then on Halloween in 1979, the unidentified body of a young woman was found in a concrete culvert near Interstate 35, just outside of Georgetown, Texas. How come all the bad shit happens in Texas? Because Texas is a fucking gun-loving, happy state. Yeah. just They kill more people in executions than anybody else does. YOLO. Yeah. You know. That's the wild, wild west, right. man. The victim appeared to be in her 20s, and she had been sexually assaulted before she was strangled to death. Sad. Sad. It seemed likely she was murdered that, that very same day. And the, and the only unique clue to her identity was a silver oval-shaped ring on her hand. The victim was nude, and the only garment of clothing she had on 
This is how you know she wasn't very good at sex. She's wearing orange socks. Aww. You can't keep your socks on no. when you're making love. No. And sadly enough, they coined her with the nickname, the Orange Socks Lady, <laughs> in the media. That's so sad. The police, I know. This is kind of messed. I kind of feel bad here. She didn't like her feet to get cold. Yeah. Her favorite thing to wear when she was making the sex? Her orange socks. Since the young woman was never identified, Orange Socks became her nickname. Years later, serial killer Henry Lee Lucas confessed to the murder of Orange Socks. And I've read about Henry Lee Lucas yeah, before. That fucking asshole. He confessed. He, he confessed to a lot of people he didn't. Yeah, he would just. John Benet Ramsey did it. Yep. Been there, hit it, did it. Yeah. Orange Socks Lady, been there, hit it, did it. <laughs> you never forget them socks. Uh, There's one thing I remember is the shade of them socks. You were you were incarcerated, Mister <laughs> Mister Lucas. No, no, I wasn't. Yeah, been there, hit it, did it. <laughs> he confessed to the orange socks. He even stated that he had sex with her corpse after she was dead. Oh God! However, Lucas did not know the woman's identity. He claimed he picked her up while hitchhiking, and only remember that her name was Joni or Judy. <laughs> Hey, there ain't nothing better than a hooker named Judy. <laughs> that sounds like a truck stop hooker if I've ever heard one before. It was a J name. Well, she I opened up the truck door and she she got in and she took her shoes off and I took <laughs> one smell of them sweet orange socks. I knew I had to and kill her. I came I I cummed in my rural king jeans right there. Cummed. <laughs> 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 oh. After being sentenced to death for the woman's murder in 1984, Lucas recanted his confession in order <laughs> to have his sentence commuted. I lied. Just kidding. <laughs> Indeed, further investigation showed that Lucas was likely working in Florida on the day of the murder. Lucas was notorious for frequently confessing to murders he never committed. Yep. And no one is sure how many people he actually killed. He probably didn't kill anybody. <laughs> I just really like the food here. <laughs> Sloppy Joe's every day. It's Sold. Awesome. Sign me up. Henry Lee Lucas died in prison in, in 2001, but Orange Socks is not the only unidentified murder victim that um, that he has been connected to. Mm. Okay. So those are all of our spoopy stories. No more spoopies. Yeah. Yeah, let's get into a couple of these here real quick. Just real quick ones. Um, we got the main one here that I have is the uh, 1962 Halloween Massacre. And you can look this picture up online, right? It is terrifying. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, one of the old school vintage Halloween masks pictures it's a group of people who um, are all wearing the do-it-yourself mask that's a black and white picture pretty terrifying there's some dickhead um, right in the middle wearing a black leather mask yeah it's uh it, it's floating around the internet it's a group of people they're uh got all these do-it-yourself masks in the center of the picture is an image of um it's someone who's wearing a black a black mask similar to what you would see um like an executioner would be wearing. I, I think it's some like a BDSM type deal. It, that's what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like a, it looks like a BDSM it looks, mask. It looks like a dumbass. Yeah. Now, um, the text under the image says, "On Halloween 1962, there was a costume party. The man in the black mask locked all doors from the outside and tried to kill all of them. The man ended up killing only seven people using a kitchen knife." He was never caught, but the mask was found in 1969. The FBI still has it in custody. Crazy, right? Well, it's fake as fuck. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> well, the, they say that... Fake news. Yeah, it's fake news. They say that they locked the door. I, I had a typo here. I typed it on the outside, but it's described they locked the door from the outside. How the hell could you go into the room if you locked the door on the outside, and how could you get out? Because it's the internet. <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it, gonna, it's stupid. I've got a 17-inch long on Twitter. <laughs> there you go real fake i don't know who knows none of your goddamn business is it <laughs> no um and then another big one here is that uh <laughs> halloween is a about holiday my, for satanic worship i was talking about my 17 inch long you said got another big one here <laughs> <laughs> no pun <laughs> now many americans believe that halloween is where you are celebrating satan and all things that are evil uh, christian broadcast network founder pat robertson denounced the holiday as a demonic ritual and a night in where the, the name of Jesus and a night when the devil rejoices, Robertson and other pastors um, pr trace the holidays to pagan and other druidic customs. Some scholars trace it to an ancient Celtic festival known as Samhain. Samhain. What in the Samhain? <laughs> I said what that means. What? What, what in the? What? What in the same? 
Now, some say the Samhain is associated with communing with the dead, but there's very little known about the actual... There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, very little is known about it besides the feast that celebrates the harvest season. Now, author Nicholas Rogers, who wrote Halloween from Pagan Ritual to Party Night... <laughs> Good book cut title. He says that uh, people date. stopped celebrating Sam Hain before Satanism was even a thing. Before you start getting the date rape drug put in your butt. <laughs> now, Henry Kelly, who is a professor at UCLA and author of Satan, a biography. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> says that Halloween is a product of 18th century folklore from Scotland and Ireland. The holiday's strongest roots are actually, the strongest roots are actually in Catholicism. Its name derived from All Hallows Eve, which is before All Saints Day, which is two nights before All Souls Day. Myth <laughs> fucking busted, bitch. Pieces, Let's go on to the next one. Pieces. Hold on a second. <laughs> this reminds me about Harry Houdini and his relentless effort to prove that psychics and spiritualists were completely false. Yes. He promised his wife that he, when he, he said, when I die, I promise you, if these people are, are telling the truth about what the undead can do, I will come back and I will let you know that I'm okay in the afterlife. So she spent relentless hours after his death performing seances, trying to, to make him appear and to hear his voice. And even to this day, there's a small group that still gets together that performs seances yeah. at a certain time of the year. I've heard about that. To bring back Harry Houdini. Old Harry Barry. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Bring him back. R.I.P. in peace. Let's go to the spider wig. <laughs> According to the story, which, of course, I'd never heard of, on Halloween night, there was a young woman who was putting together a Halloween costume for a party at a friend's house. I was smoking some of the dankest stank wank. <laughs> she I looked was, over and she had a spider wig. I swear to God, man. <laughs> she was still missing a few things and happened to remember that there was an old trunk of Halloween accessories in her oh, attic. Stupid bitch. She goes up, finds the trunk and opens it finds a wig hat glove and boots to finish her totally original costume idea that nobody has ever thought of so before she had a lot of junk in the trunk yeah she <laughs> and then she leaves for the party <laughs> after she had been at the party and dancing for about an hour she noticed that her head had starting to was starting to itch she begins to scratch <laughs> she began to scratch at her head and all the other party goer goers noticed that thousands of tiny spiders were crawling out of her wig. Hey, bro, we were smoking some dank, some stank wank, <laughs> and this bitch got pubic lice on all up on her head. And started run up, running up off her head and shit. They crawled all over her face and then all over the house. Now, the legend is said to originate in the 50s when women wore hairstyles like the poodle cut and the beehive. And if you know anything about these haircuts... Stupid haircuts. Yeah, not only are they stupid, but... In order to keep the hair stiff and neat, they would have to not wash it, so oh. their hair would get really dirty. Dreadlocks. It, it, yeah, it would attract bugs and all sorts of nasty shit. Um, so, yeah, fake-ass spider wig. Let's go on to the next one. Jesus. <laughs> we got the Blue Star Tattoo. You pumpkin-headed freak. <laughs> the Blue Star Tattoo was another, another good legend. It's uh, similar to the Poison Candy. Uh, it appears in emails, chain letters, flyers, things oh, yeah, like this. this it's time. yeah, it's it claims that there's drug dealers that are targeting school children by lacing a blue star uh, temporary tattoo with LSD. Some of that Walter White. Yeah, and just that hand, just by handling the tattoo, it's enough to absorb it into the body. It'll, it'll get you pregnant. It's how potent it is. <laughs> this it'll tattoo get you pregnant with a butt baby. It'll be wrapped in foil and it'll be the size of a pencil eraser. Now, some of the tattoos could even contain strychnine. Smoking, snorting, shooting. <laughs> and strychnine is used in poisons to kill rats. So, that that's some good shit. Hmm. So, it would definitely kill your little ratty-ass kid, Cheryl. <laughs> so, you better forward this to everyone in your Sunday brunch club, or little Jimmy, Johnny, and Susie will be dead as shit, and their blood will be on your hands because you didn't love them enough to share the fucking chain letter. <laughs> Don't be a Cheryl. Share those chain letter emails, people. Please, for the love of Jeebus. And all things good. Chain letters serve a purpose. You can always tell the IQ of a person by the, some of the stuff they share on Facebook. Honestly. You really can. Your Aunt Trudy. I've read it for the final time at 11.52 on December 12th. Facebook will begin charging and they will yeah. not ask for copyright oh infrictions God. upon your Facebook. As long as you post as this copyright, you, you will not have to pay for Facebook and they cannot use anything on your page or newsfeed without your written consent from uh, adult or caregiver of some type if you post this right now. 
All right. Thanks, Aunt Trudy. <laughs> Thank you for your insight. <laughs> we got one more here. Halloween campus murders. And you call them out on it. They're like, just trying to be safe. <laughs> <laughs> this is fake. I'm, I'm just making sure. <laughs> Now, this urban legend revolves around a psychic and a talk show host. So, the original psychic, her name was Jean, D- or Jean Dixon, but it usually involves a well-known or famous psychic of the time. So, this is a reoccurring thing. It happens every, you know, so often. Now, the most known talk show that it was on was Geraldo Rivera's, but it has been on Oprah, David Letterman, Montel Williams, Johnny Carson, and Phil Donahue's old ass. All wonderful people. S- all wonderful people. So, what happens? Well, the psychic pretty much will refer to the campus and clues then later will reveal what campus she believes and i'm saying she because you know that, that's that's how it usually goes um it's a he she yeah <laughs> she that they'll reveal what campus they believe that it pertains to and they'll name other details such as uh, the murderer who's usually an angry student teacher or escaped insane asylum patient this you know the the stuff that you would think the murder weapon is always described as something scary and Typical sinister, bullshit. like yeah, like an axe or a knife or something that could easily people make people think that of, of a scary movie and just for them to lose their shit. It tends to cause more panic as well because the fact that it does make people think of a scary movie. Yeah. So the number of people being killed is usually between ten and eighteen, <laughs> and is sometimes described as being only f- uh, females being killed. By an axe wielding maniac in a little Bo Peep costume. Yeah. <laughs> in later versions, of all the shit. Yeah, and later versions say that they'll be wearing a scream mask, which I've never understood how the scream mask was scary. But uh, I like to wear a scream mask when I have sex. Same, same. Now they will uh, also tell the campus, or they will also say that uh, campus parties where the students didn't heed the advice that uh, you know they were they were attacked in the wee hours of the morning and killed because they didn't listen to Lady Cleo's. Oh, honey child. There will be a man in a little Bo Peep costume and he's going to slash your asshole open. You better listen, darling. And the only way to tell the only way to get away is with my secret plan that you can have for forty nine sixteen easy payments of twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> oh gosh. Visa MasterCard accepted. It's a fun world we live in, isn't it? Yeah, we told you this one was going to be a shit show. These were all very old murders. That's why we laughed about them. (laughs) We have very much sympathy towards the victims and their families. Too soon, bro. We're probably going to get killed in our sleep someday. One of us will continue the podcast and we'll make jokes about it. Yeah, my cat. You can do it with my cat. (laughs) I'm down. She's right here. I like the kitty. So, yeah, guys, review us. Talk to us on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Brohio Podcast, Twitter.com slash Brohio Podcast. We are the Brohio Podcast. The one only as far as that name concerns. Yeah. And send us a dollar on Patreon so we can make love to your name. Yeah. And speaking of making love to your name, the deal is if you give us a dollar, we shout you out. Woo. And we have a new Patreon subscriber. Sorry we missed you, buddy. Bobby Mulwey. Thank you, sir. He's got the shout out coming his way right now. Bobby, thank you so much. We are going to try to buy a new microphone, I think, or lots of condoms, or a, a MacBook. Ooh, that'd be cool. Seven MacBooks. <laughs> so we can do, like, Angry Birds and stuff. Oh, that'd be so cool. Yeah. But no, honestly, we want we want a similar microphone so we can both sound beautiful. Yeah, and then... uh we pretty much have everything we need with them from there. It's going to go straight to um, merch. Merch. Merch and shit. Yeah. So thanks again, guys, for listening to this episode. Thank you very much. We'll, uh, next week, we have our live show. It's October the 28th. Yeah. Hauntings. That, it's a Dayton Paranormal special. Yep. That'll be our episode next week, I'm assuming. Yeah. We're going to figure out a way to record our live show and then probably put it up because we're not going to have time to research two different things. Right. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's going to be all local stuff. Um so yeah, it should be a good time. It yeah. should be fun. If you can make it out to Lucky Star Brewing in Miamisburg, Ohio, come see us. All right. We'll talk to you soon. We love you. Thank you. Thank you.